It's always fun to meet new brands and today it's time to say hello to UM Motors. We've written their commando, the story's on the website, but today I'm riding the Renegade Sport S. Yes, there is an intruder on the scene. The headlight cowl is the striking design feature of the UM Sport S and in this orange and black combination, it is hard to miss. To be fair, Suzuki flattery aside, the cowl gives the Sport S identifiability. However, the tank is relatively anonymous and there's very heavy design work on the rather large side panel. The overall impression is of a cruiser, but the UM doesn't leave a more lasting impression, which worries me a little bit. More importantly, as you look closer, you get the sense of a motorcycle that could do with more attention to the details, better finish levels, and in the long run, better build quality as well. I find the Renegade a little bit amusing in a sort of kitschy, gimmicky sort of way because uh, there's a lot of bits on it which are not stuff that regular manufacturers would do. For example, there's a USB port and when you think about it, it makes complete sense to have a charging socket available on the motorcycle. So you plug your phone in and it charges, it makes complete sense. But would a regular manufacturer do it? Not for the next three or four years, as far as I can tell. There's also the LEDs. They have some sort of illumination on all four sides of the motorcycle. They call it some 360 degree system or something. So whichever direction you look at, the motorcycle is visible. Think about it. It's a gimmicky idea, but is it a bad idea for you to be more visible than you would be? It's not. That's why they have daytime running lamps on all the cars. So I'm slightly amused by it. I'm slightly bemused by it. And in some ways, it makes sense. Thankfully, the riding experience is a little bit more straightforward. This is a 25 PS engine, so it shouldn't be slow. The low-end and mid-range torque seems enough, and refinement levels are acceptable too. That impression lasts until you realize that reading the small markings on the speedometer is hard to do, and you're only going about 100 km an hour, and you can already feel the vibration increasing. Unfortunately, while the engine's performance seems on par with expectations, high revs bring a fair amount of vibration and long distances on the UM Sport S will definitely mean numb fingers. In wet conditions, I push to about 130, but I cannot wait for the road test to see what the actual measured performance is. So that's the heart of the matter. It's a 279cc engine. There's a carburetor. It's got a four-valve head. It's a liquid-cooled engine. What I like about it, it's a neat, clean engine. It does its job. There's some torque, there's some power. It mixes well together. And in the traffic that we've ridden in today, it seems to be holding its own. Is it very good flat out? No, it's a cruiser. It's not supposed to go flat out. And we will, of course, establish the performance at the road test. But overall, it's a nice engine. I suspect that a little improvement in finish and more control over vibration will immediately produce a big step up in quality perception for the UM Sport S because the right quality and the handling are both acceptable if without flair. Our ride was over reasonably good roads and the sport felt good. Big bumps, they might have you out of the seat, but I suspect that few Sport S riders will ever venture into really poor terrain. Handling similarly is predictable and the TVS tires should get extra credit for showing great grip and tenacity in the wet conditions. Braking similarly is quite sharp does not have ABS and does not have a lot of feel, but it's adequate. The UM Renegade Sport S is made by the UM Lohia factory in Uttarakhand and it's 70% localized. The other 30%, including the engine, comes from China. I do believe the motorcycle can be better. You only need to consider that the robustly built Mahindra Mojo is very close in price and has better performance. It's a clear reference, although both motorcycles are not aimed at the same road. Well, very, very interesting. I was not expecting to be surprised by the UM and I am. Uh, to me, it's fairly honest in the sense that it's a one and a half lakh rupees ex showroom motorcycle and it feels it. So you're not getting uh, any false sense of hope in the sense that oh, it's an extraordinarily well-made motorcycle at the price. No, it's not. Is it a reasonably good motorcycle? I think it is. What we need to do now is establish the long-term reliability of the motorcycle. Very hard to do on a short road test like this. But when it comes back to overdrive, back to our offices in Bombay, we put it through its paces. We should have some fun with it.